It looks like your next flight could cost you even more than you expected. WestJet is announcing plans to shut down Sunwing, the vacation carrier it just took over, and merge the two airlines. Uh, we're joined by uh, to discuss the consumer impact by John Graddock. He's a lecturer at McGill University. John, thank you very much indeed for joining us. My pleasure. You say that it's almost inevitable that this um, incorporation of Sunwing into WestJet is a sign that fares are going up? Yeah, I think in the longer run, and I'd say within the next 12 months, you'll see fares go up. Primarily, the fares that will go up will be the ones that are uh, associated with tours and with Sun Markets. Uh, we're consolidating uh, WestJet holidays with Sunwing vacations on one side of it, and we're also looking at uh, Sunwings airplanes and Swoops airplanes being uh, rebranded and repositioned into the WestJet fleet. So there is a significant change happening in the landscape in Canadian aviation. You say if we look at a, a destination like Puerto Vallarta, um, that it, that makes it clear that there's going to be fewer flights. Yeah, I think that you know you have three carriers that have been very very active in the Sun marketplace that are involved in this transaction. You have, of course, the leader in the Canadian marketplace, which is Sunwing Vacations, and they're very strong in central and eastern Canada, some presence in western Canada. You also have Swoop, and you also have WestJet, WestJet Holidays operating out of Toronto. So there, there is going to be some duplication of routes being served, primarily out of Pearson, but also in some other eastern Canadian cities that are going to have to be uh, rationalized. So there will be a loss of service uh, and most likely a price increase as well. Why does the government allow these airline mergers to go through? <laughs> I think that, you know, in this case, in the Sunwing uh, acquisition by WestJet, if you remember last year when this first came about, the Competition Bureau did, in fact, um, did, you know, did push back quite a bit on this one, saying there will be a loss of competition, there will be a risk of higher fares and higher prices. Uh, but notwithstanding that pushback from competition, Transport Canada uh, and the Minister of Transport did approve the transaction, put a few conditions on that transaction that may come back to bite WestJet. But mm -hmm. you know, for the essence is that the, air, the, you know, the, the, the government really is allowing commercial directives and commercial practices to lead uh, their decision on these airlines. So they had to extend the tour operators' packages to five new cities and maintain capacity on the most affected routes. Um, but I, I'm always curious about those things. Who actually enforces these undertakings <laughs> that companies give? And you know that, they, you know that they've got high-priced legal help to help them wiggle out of it if they want to. Of course, you know, and, that, and that's the whole point, is that you know, the conditions that were put on the acquisition um, were nice when it comes to a public positioning, the question becomes one of enforceability. And what are you gonna do about it, Mr. Regulator, if you find that, for instance, um, prices for tour packages are going up inordinately? And so there isn't any provision in those conditions that say, so if you do violate one of these conditions or we suspect you're violating one of these conditions, what are the consequences? And none of those were elaborated in, in those conditions. So we don't know exactly what the, the uh, yeah. And also I'm curious, is, does the government officially release a report saying whether or not a company has adhered to conditions that are undertakings it gave? They don't officially go public with it. There are enforcement officers, there are inspectors uh, in the Transport Canada portfolio that mm -hmm. look at these situations and they're reported internally. And there's a conversation that takes place between the regulator and the airline to say, wait a second, guys, uh, you're, you're, you're kind of uh, jumping a little bit aside of these conditions, mm -hmm. come back. And if you don't, you know, come back, then we start making it a public issue. And they, and they could be facing fines, but very rarely have I seen fines associated with these conditions. Are, so are we paying, uh, do we have a duopoly in this country? It seems obvious. And are we paying excessively for, for air, air travel? Well, for the last 24 months, I say Canadians have been getting away with a pretty good deal on domestic travel, uh, with the you know with the introduction of fleet carriers like Flair and Lynx and even Canada Jetlines. Uh, you know there are there there have been new players, and you mm -hmm. see porters showing up with 100 new airplanes. Um, so there has been a growth in terms of capacity in the marketplace. The problem is that you know the economics of flying these airplanes 
is dubious at this point in time. When you have, you know, Stephen Jones of our friends at Flair saying, my job is to get people off the couch and flying. That means in his mind that I have to charge low fares, $79 Toronto, Calgary, $99 Toronto, Vancouver. You are not making any money after you pay all the taxes and all of the charges in there, you're making 20 or 10 or 12 bucks a passenger, which is nowhere near enough even to pay for the fuel mm -hmm. on those airplanes. So it's an interesting strategy to, to in fact, get a lot of hype and a lot of people interested in flying. Um, Long-term survival, I've seen this picture too many times in the past where mm -hmm. they, won't last very, they won't last very long. Oh, of course, they would disagree, I guess, these carriers. Uh, they would say we've got thought-out business models, but uh, you're, you're skeptical. Um, now, what is the solution? You know, I have an idea, but I don't think anybody would agree with me. Just let American carriers in to fly selected routes, and don't worry about reciprocity. Just let them in, just for the hell of it, and see if it brings down fares. <laughs> Hey, you've been talking to the Minister of Transport lately? Uh, <laughs> they, you know, that, that, that idea has been around for a long time. You know, I think, I, you know, I've been, been involved in this business for over 45 years. And yeah, way back when, that was, you know, the, the solution to the Canadian dilemma is just open up the borders and let international carriers fly, you know, let American fly Toronto, Vancouver. Let, you know, let British Airways fly Vancouver to Seattle or, or Vancouver to New York. Um, you know, there, there, is a, there is an issue with that, and the issue is regulatory reform and bilateral rights and the extent to which aviation is considered a, an economic uh, utility and that there has to be reciprocity and there has to be what we call quid pro quo. You know, if I give you something, we have to get something back in return. Uh, and so the opening up of routes in Canada is called something called cabotage. Uh, which is basically having a foreign carrier operate purely domestic routes. Uh, and that is very few, very few countries, very few regimes do in fact allow that. They're looking to protect their own carriers and make sure that service in Canada is managed and directed by Canadian organizations rather than depending on a foreign carrier to decide whether or not service will be there. Um, I just want to ask you one last question. It's so expensive to fly to a place like Newfoundland. Uh, it's very expensive <laughs> to fly to the north, but just focus on Newfoundland. Wouldn't it be no. a huge economic boost if we could get cheaper flights there? Um, because it's a tricky yeah. place, to, uh, expensive place to travel to. And could that be achieved, cheaper, cheaper fares? <laughs> Yeah, of course. You know, I, I'm just looking at out of Montreal as an example. Lynx is just starting to fly from from Montreal to St. John's, Newfoundland, nonstop, and they're charging somewhere in the range of about $149 or $199. That's pretty which good. Which isn't bad. That's a good deal, you know. But Toronto, Newfoundland is still $700. Uh, so when these new carriers show up, you know, you'll get good deals for the first little while just to get people to get excited about flying to those city pairs. After a while, the fares do go back up again. Uh, the, the ultra low cost carriers are, in fact, the price leaders in Canada. Flair and Lynx, everybody's trying to follow up these guys. Air Canada's chasing them, WestJet's chasing them. Mm -hmm. Swoop was until last week. Um, but, you know, the, these are the guys that basically are driving the bottom of the market, which is where passengers want to fly. And, you know, the big carriers are no choice but to follow suit. So, yes, there is competition, and we need competition to keep prices low.